Hello, welcome again to Benchwarmers. We are at Elmwood Golf Course in Sioux Falls this week, joined by Danny Sinkson, the uh, uh, teaching pro, professional pro. What do they call? What kind of pro do they call you? Uh, here I'm the at, PGA head golf professional here at Elmwood. All right, and the uh, men's golf coach at uh, Augustana University as well. And coming off a big weekend here, Elmwood hosted the uh, state amateur tournaments in South Dakota, the men's and the women's. And just first of all, how'd it go? Was it? I think it went fantastic. We've been looking forward to this for many years. It's been in the works since our renovation and yeah. where we're we going to be ready, where are things going to be there, and I think we knocked it out of the park. All right, and you just look at some of the scores on the men's side. There's some really good young players, uh, high school players even, and uh, college players in South Dakota. Jace Guthmiller is a kid from Yankton, plays at the University of Nebraska, came out here, shot 62 on uh, Friday in the first round, ended up at 14 under. Are these scores a little out of the ordinary? Yeah, I thought they were a little out of the ordinary. I mean, generally in South Dakota, we have a lot of wind. And Friday, yeah. there was no wind. I thought the greens rolled perfect, and he just took advantage of great condition. Uh, we kind of tried to set it up each day being a little harder, and I think you could see that by the scores reflected on Saturday, Sunday. But uh, yeah, Friday was an exciting day out here. Uh, Jace pretty much birdied the entire back nine. Yeah. So. Uh, it was really neat to see. And another young man uh, from your former high school, uh, yeah. Sioux Falls Roosevelt, Jack London, is going to be just a junior this year at Sioux Falls Roosevelt. He's already a South Dakota uh, Golf Association junior champion. He shot 65 at Lakeview earlier this summer there. He comes out and shoots 63 here as a junior in high school. What about Jack London? There's some other really good players, a couple good kids from uh, Mitchell, Jeff Meyer, Inc., Russell Pick. Yeah. A lot of really good, maybe just in high school or just out of high school players. Yeah, I mean, Jack Lundeen, we're uh, – I've actually given lessons to Jack since he was about 10 years old, and uh, it was just a really special day out here. He's a fantastic kid, fantastic player, and he had three eagles. Uh, it was an amazing day. Uh, to cap it off on 18, he uh, knocked it stiff from 200 to about 8 feet and eagled the last hole of the day to shoot 63. So I told him he had the course record for about five minutes, and then Jace came in right after him with a 62. So uh, <laughs> it was pretty incredible. Jesse Talcott, uh, an old Sioux Falls O'Gorman kid, uh, plays at the University of South Dakota, uh, finished his eight under. It was just a fabulous weekend for the men. Uh, the women, Cassie, uh, Carissa Guthrie is uh, from Pierce, South Dakota. Pierce had really good uh, high school program in the last few years. She plays collegiately at Northern Michigan, won the women's competition. Julie Janza was right in there in second place, uh, representing the older guard, if you want to call it that. And then another girl from Pierre, uh, Katie Bartlett, who plays at the University of South Dakota as well, was in the top three there. So a lot of good young women's players as well. Yeah, I, I was really impressed how they played. I think the course set up a little bit longer than maybe they were used to in the past at some of these championships, but they, they handled it really well. And it, the last day was really exciting. Julie shed 33 on her opening nine, and, and it was just really tight. So we had a great group of young ladies and uh, just, just doing really well. It was fun to see. Just over, I think, 30 women's participants this mm -hmm. year. There were 99, I think, on the men's side. Are those numbers about what you get every year for the yeah, uh, amateur I, tournament? I think it's a little up being just in Sioux Falls here. I think everybody was kind of excited to see the new Elmwood and, yeah. and the renovations we made out here. So it was uh, it was really received very well. All right, so you as a former player at uh, Roosevelt High School, went to Missouri Southern State, played on the Dakotas Tour, yeah. and then uh, you've been a head coach at USD and now at Augustana. Talk about why it is so hard. you got great players from South Dakota and North Dakota and Minnesota. Why it's so hard to get to the PGA Tour in the sport of golf. We've seen guys from uh, around here get to the NFL in football, get to the major leagues in baseball. Why is it so hard in golf? I, I, I think the, the difference is kind of the minor league system. In golf, we have mini tours yeah. and you got to put your own money up or maybe find a sponsor that does that. So you kind of work your way up into that. And basically you got to catch the right breaks at the right time. You know, uh, Q school is kind of it for us. If, if you go to Q school and it doesn't happen, you got to kind of start mm -hmm. over the whole next year. So, um, I think you're able to be discovered by athletes or by coaches and stuff in other sports. Whereas this is like, you got to put those scores up at the right time in the right place and, and work your way up through those rankings. So, um, I think that's probably the hardest thing is just that you're, you're kind of putting yourself out there every time at a golf tournament. And regardless, if you shot 63 day one, if you shoot 75 the final day, yeah. you may not make it to that next level of Q school or make it into that PGA event. All right, speaking of the PGA Tour, had the PGA Championship over the weekend. The finish was great on Sunday, and you said a lot of the players that were here finishing up at the state amateur tournament gathered to watch the end of that yeah. with Tiger and Brooks Kepka, and, and that was exciting. Yeah, it was. I mean, you could definitely tell there's a different atmosphere in the clubhouse watching a major yeah. when Tiger's in the finish. I mean, there was just 
I don't know, it was pretty ruckus in there when you'd walk in. I was doing the scoring and then I'd walk inside and hear some cheers now and then. And I, I could just tell there was a little different different atmosphere going on. And it was, you know, the top players out there right now, pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, there's no denying it the Tiger makes a difference in the excitement level. And Brooks Kepka. Tiger, Adam Scott, all those guys that were in the, the last two groups, all big muscled guys that work out a lot. I had heard some uh, pundits say that Tiger Woods worked out too much and that was part of his downfall that led to some of his uh, workout problems and his injury problems and things like that. You have to work out. Your, your college golfers at Augustana, they have workout regiments. It's got to be part of the part of the game these days, right? Yeah, I, I think it's a huge part of the game and where we've shifted with these new course lengths and all that stuff. I, I I think it's mandatory at this point. I mean, you look at a guy like Brooks, Brooks Kepka. Yeah. It's it's pretty incredible to see what he can do with a golf ball, and it you know, and it's consistent as well. To keep your body at that level, playing four days under that kind of stress and stuff, I I think it's imperative that they play that way. And I'm not saying they didn't do it in the past, but I think the the definitely the transition to being fit, being in that spot, you can see it from all the top yeah. golfers in the in the world now. They're all there. All right, so when we come back, we're going to talk. You touched a little bit on the uh, the course changes this year. There was a transition in management this year at the public courses in Sioux Falls. We'll talk about what those changes have uh, looked like uh, this summer here at Elmwood with Danny Sinkson when we come back. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics. Welcome back to Bench Warmers, presented by Avera Orthopedics. We are at Elmwood Golf Course in Sioux Falls with Danny Sinkson. And Danny, the, there was a change in management of the, South, uh, the Sioux Falls public courses uh, just in the past year. Went from Dakota Golf, who had had it uh, for more than 20 years as the management company, to a company called Landscapes Unlimited out of Nebraska. And it was a controversial change, and a lot of people had to go through a lot of uh, transition, including you. I mean, personally, that had to be a big change for you, didn't it? Yeah, I, I started working on the courses when I was 15 years yeah. old. I've been playing at Elm One since I was three, so yeah, it was, it was a big transition. I mean, I care very deeply about all the people I was working with before, but uh, Landscapes has been fantastic. We, we've done a great job out here, my, in my opinion, to kind of transition this year, get through some of uh, some of the early on things, but. Uh, you know, they're a world-class company and they've, they've treated us well. All right, 27 holes here at Elmwood. The, the East Nine has always been kind of the, the other nine, right? Yeah. In addition to the North and the West. But the East Nine is in really good shape right now. And was that part of uh, some of the improvements you wanted to make? There's the clubhouse, there's some changes inside with the food and the beverage and things like that, right? Yeah, so, so the renovation over the last five years had a lot to do with the airport construction, uh, you know, changing some of the things out here. And uh, we were able to renovate all of our greens, all of our fairways. Uh, and and it's some changes were made in the process as far as you know layout of the golf course But we have our championship course that we just had a great tournament on and we'll test all ability levels So I think the golf course has you know been been growing to this point all those years this last this last five seasons And we're kind of in that spot where everything's looking really good yeah. And uh, so it's kind of the next phase is you know getting a few more things with our clubhouse done uh, So we you know we got new carpet we got some walls up we got a new bar in there uh, new things that just make it look nice in there. It's been, you know, obviously a retro clubhouse to to an extent, yeah. but uh, we were really able to make it look nice in there, and uh, we're excited to see what happens here moving forward. And you talked about the, the shape that the course is in, and then props to your guys that have kept it all yeah. summer like that, and especially for the state amateur this past Yeah, weekend. they've done a great job moving things forward uh, each year, and, you know, last weekend we had a pretty – crazy storm out here it, they called it kind of a microburst that happened on our course and it sent a deal right through the middle of it and uh, about seven trees got knocked down and there was sticks and branches everywhere so over the last week they were out here a uh, very long amount of time so it was really cool to see where they got the course to there's a couple guys who played last weekend they couldn't believe all the stuff they had done and really had it looking perfect this weekend so hats off to Travis Nagel, Ryan Benda, Norm Parsons and the entire crew they were all hands on deck this week so it was really neat to see and uh, personal my dad uh, Bob Sinkson works out here with me too and he spent a lot of time out here making sure things look great on the range and on the course as well so <laughs> all right very good and the college season for Augustana starts here in about four weeks or so, right? Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, we start uh, practice in two weeks here before they get a uh, officially move on campus. We get a couple starter season a little early. We do some qualifying rounds out here and stuff. So real excited. Uh, kind of a new squad this year. We're, we're losing our uh, player of the year, Parker Klitsky. Mm -hmm. So uh, we kind of got a 
a whole new crew. Six freshmen coming in this season. So <laughs> good. Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. All right. And you got the Augie Invitational in September out here at Elmwood as well, right? Yeah, the men and women are both gonna be playing right here at Elmwood. Uh, excited to host that. Should be should be a fun time. All right. Appreciate it, Danny. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Danny sinks in here at Elmwood. When we come back, we're going to talk with Mark Ovenden from KDL Sports, uh, talk a little bit of golf, talk about his beloved Red Sox and uh, some amateur baseball with Mark O when we come back. Welcome back to Benchwarmers. Joined now by Mark O. Mark Ovenden from KDLT here in Sioux Falls. And uh, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. We're at a golf course. The <laughs> hard part is I'm playing? dressed up and ready for work today and not playing golf. Work, 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 whatever. Yeah. Have you played Elmwood this summer? I have, um, and it, it's really coming around nicely. Yeah. I, I like some of the changes. I've sort of observed it, observed it over the last four years because the, you know, the first three years they did it in nines, nine whole segments where they redid everything. And um, it, it takes a while for all those changes to start to mature, and I think they've They've done that. To it's that point it's now, right? very good shape. Yeah, I think the players that played in the state tournament over the weekend were quite impressed. How about some of those scores? Yes, in the state amateur, the men's amateur, we talked about Jace Guth Mil uh, Miller from Yankton, 62 here on Friday, and uh, Jack Lundeen, a junior at Sioux Falls Roosevelt, shoots 63. There's some really good young players in the state. Those are crazy scores. Yeah. I I can't ever remember in all the years I've been here, 40 years of covering sports, where you had a 62 and a 63 in a state tournament. That's I don't think it's ever happened. That's just nuts. And um, and Jace played well for three straight days and built a six shot lead after two rounds. And you know, I'm not going to say coasted the final day, but it's kind of nice having a six shot lead yeah. when you tee off. Finishes 14 under for the yeah. three rounds. That's a, that's a great score. Absolutely. Of course, 10 of it was the first day. Yeah. All right. Have hey, you been around the course uh, around the the state? In the uh, summer, playing a little golf. Anything? Is there one course maybe that has wowed you this summer across South Dakota or North Dakota? Well, I, I always take my boys to Sutton Bay. Yeah. Uh, we have a weekend that we go out there every year, and it, it's hard not to be wowed by that. Um, it, it's just so peaceful because you're out there on the river and you're away from the world. But we've got so many really good courses in South Dakota. I, I need to get out west and play a couple of the new ones out there. Uh, the new, the newer course in Spearfish, I have not played. I love Spearfish Canyon. That's always been one of my favorite courses, and now it sounds like there's two of them out there you can play. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it was four or five years ago that Lee Schoenbeck and his son went out and played every course yeah, in the yeah. state. That would be fun. Someday I'll do that. Someday. Not while I'm still working so much, but someday that would be cool. All right. Um, are you on the Tiger train? We had the PGA Championship over the weekend. Tiger was in contention from start to finish. Are you on the train? Have, did you ever get off the Tiger train? Well, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge Tiger fan personally, yeah, yeah. but I, I, I've been kind of pulling for him to, to get back playing great. I don't think he'll ever play the way he did before because that's unrealistic. Uh, but at the PGA, and, and he's made he's made unbelievable progress that's what i mean you summer. keep saying he's not going to get back to this point right it's back to that right. point and, and then it takes and another step final round of the pga i i found i i played saturday too and sunday i had a tea time and i was like i don't know i think i'm gonna sit home i mow my lawn get some stuff done and i was just captivated and i was gonna watch for a while and then go play a late tea time and i watched for a while and I couldn't leave. He makes you watch. You it feel was, sorry for Kepka and some of these other guys that are winning these tournaments. Yeah, because no all one the cared. Attention's on Tiger. Because Kepka is a great player. But Tiger, the front nine on Sunday was uh, missed every fairway and was two under par. That was one of the most incredible nine hole stretches I've ever seen, just because of the fact that he was all over the place. Yeah. And then the shot he hit on 15 to a foot. That's a hard hole. That's a hard course. But I mean, it was like he's back. He's pretty good. Yeah. And it's un yeah, it is undeniable that uh, he he's the one everybody wants to watch. But there's so many great players now. Yeah. That's why, and he's 43. Uh, you know, he'll never be as dominant as he was. But it sure is fun to see him in the mix. And I, there's no question that Jim Furyk will, will have to take him and make him instead of an assistant captain. He has got to be on the Ryder Cup team. Yeah, he will sure. not hear the end of it if Tiger is not on the Ryder Cup team. All right, uh, when we come back with Marco, a uh, little amateur baseball in South Dakota, talk about the Red Sox a little bit. 
Are they the best team in baseball? Will they continue to be a little bit of football with Marco when we come back? Welcome back to Bench Warmers. Hanging out with Mark Ovenden here at Elmwood Golf Course in Sioux Falls. Had the state amateur baseball tournaments over the weekend. Canova wins the Class B championship, and uh, Renner's Monarchs win another Class A championship. Why is amateur baseball such a beloved sport in the summer? Why is it such a big deal in South Dakota? It's your town team. You know, it's uh, what better thing to do than go hang out at the ballpark and watch a bunch of guys, and I'll, I'll, I'll use this as an example. Alexandria's Angels, who had won three of the last five state titles. If you look on their roster, I think 90 plus percent of those guys all grew up there. Yeah. They're a bunch of buddies who've been playing together for a long time. Why wouldn't you want to go out? But you don't see them? it in other states. It's, it's no. a little unique and it's, it is a wonderful thing in the summer. So. Oh, it's, uh, you know, and, and it was great having it in Sioux Falls. Yeah. I'm still a big proponent and it makes it a lot easier for us yeah. in TV to cover it, yeah. but I'm still a proponent of Cadwell yeah. Park. There, I mean, there's just something special about it the uh, amateur tournament being played there it's, although like i said it was great here the you know it was well attended exciting games um i i, I just think that's you know it's football season's almost here it's kind of like the end of summer yeah. it really is the end of summer yeah. football's this week <laughs> all right we'll get to that in a second quick thought on uh, your red Sox, best team in baseball right now they they keep it up best record in baseball i'm still not convinced that they're doesn't the best mean team, best team? Uh, I, I I sure like the Houston Astros. Um, the Yankees have the best bullpen in the history of the game. Uh, they really scare me in a postseason series. The Kansas I, City Royals a few years ago had the best bullpen. Well, the Yankees Just have a better one up. now. Fine. If, if you look at, sorry, but okay. you know, you, you look at who they got like seven guys that can come in and scare you. All right. right? Um, the Sox have been playing. They they've been overachieving. Uh, J.D. Martinez has been great. Mookie Betts has been great. Chris Sale's the best pitcher in baseball. He's a Cy Young winner. I don't care what anyone else says. He is dominant. He's given up one run the last 44 innings. Uh, the last 10 starts, his ERA is 0.2. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it's a fun team to be on a fan On Sunday, right he now. came off the DL. He missed two starts and struck out 12 guys in five innings. Do the math. The most you can strike out is 15. Unless there's drop third strikes I guess you could get more than that but 12 strikeouts in five innings and they pulled him because he'd been on the DL they're playing great do they do I think they're going to win the World Series I grew up a, a Red Sox fan I'm always waiting for the worst see to exactly I know but they're they're the best team in baseball right now right now they are yeah all right quick hitters on uh, some football South Dakota State back to the FCS semis this year yes or no boy without Goddard and Winicky, I think that's going to be a a tall order. Yeah. Uh, Taron Christian is back, and he's he's a great quarterback. I don't think there's any question about that. But we're talking. You're talking semifinals. Yeah. Eh, I don't know. All right. What do you think? You're a jackrabbit. I think I think they've got the team to get back there. Yes, I do. Big losses with Goddard and Winicky, but yes, Taron will take them there. I do believe they got some good young wide receivers. Defense is going to be better. They, they might be a little tougher to play defense against because you don't know who yeah, the ball's exactly. going to. Exactly. Whereas you know the last couple of years it was. Got it and win six, man. All right, USD back to the playoffs. Kind of depends on on how Austin Simmons looks. Yeah. Um, Chris Streveler was he was as exciting a player as we've seen around here in a long time. Um, you know, and I nothing to take away from Goddard and Winicky, but Streveler was like a one man highlight reel. Mm -hmm. You know, he was unbelievable because he could run, he could throw. Uh, they scored a bunch of points. They were never out of games. Um, I think they can make the playoffs again, yeah, but I don't know that they're going to be as exciting as they were last year. That's a, That, again, is a, a, a tough comparison there because they were very exciting to watch. All right. Going to be fun. Football gets started. High school stuff gets started here this week. Yes, I know. We'll see you, <laughs> see you on the air there, brother. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. All right. At Elmwood, this is great. Thanks to Marco. Right back, we'll talk a little more high school football with Jason Andera right after this. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Avera Orthopedics. Welcome back to Bench Warmers. Joined now by Jason and Dara from Midco Sports Network. You want to know high school football? Pay attention to this guy. You're excited. Football games get going. We got high school games 
starting this week in North and South Dakota. Yeah, exactly. The small schools get started because they have an extra round of playoffs. So some people wonder, why do the small schools start a week early? Well, they've got more time to decide in the playoffs, so they got to get get going a little bit earlier. All right. Um, you have been working on rankings in South Dakota yeah. for all the last two months, really. You got it all out there on social media. Yeah, the fun thing, I took a little extra time this year. I contacted every coach in South Dakota, <laughs> heard from about half of them. So I decided to make predictions on every single high school football team this year, something a little different. So that's all on the blog. And trust me, I've heard from some of these schools that are ready to prove me wrong, so I can't wait. South Dakota big schools, uh, Ken Rapid City Stevens, Brandon Valley. Is anybody going to knock off Sioux Falls in the uh, Dakota Dome in November? I mean, that's the big question, right? 14 years in a row, a Sioux Falls school has done it. Stevens has some tools. I've heard from coaches around the area that say, this is the best Stevens team we've had in a long time. Brandon Valley right there, too. A very up-and-coming class, a lot of good juniors. But when it all is said and done, I mean, the top three teams in the state are probably going to be from Sioux Falls. Here in town, it's yeah. still Washington. What order? O'Gorman? Washington, O'Gorman, and then Roosevelt, Brandon have got very close together. And don't be surprised if Lincoln does it a year early. Next year, Lincoln is going to be the team to beat, but they might they might creep up a year early. All right, and we have live high school football games on Midco Sports Network coming up this fall. What's the schedule look like early on? Very excited about this. North Dakota or a South Dakota game every Friday night. We start the South Dakota coverage with President's Bowl in a couple of weeks. Brandon Valley is joined uh, to the party this year. They play Lincoln in the first one, and then Roosevelt and Washington, always great games in the in the President's Bowl. And then later on, I think we have uh, Huron at Sioux Falls O'Gorman. Yep, we've, we've got, got Pierre at Brookings. Yep, and the Midco Rushmore Bowl out from uh, in Rapid O'Hara City. Stadium in Rapid City. And then we end the year at the new Joe Quintal with Harrisburg and Mitchell. So looking forward to some new fields out there. Too. And Varsity Sports Live Friday nights on Midco Sports Network. With my buddy. All right, it's going to be fun, brother. All right, high school football getting going this week. Pay attention to Jason Andera for all you need to know. Thanks for watching Bench Warmers.